برحب فيكم مجددا بالجلسه العامه I would like to welcome you again in this plenary and I hope that your interventions and discussions of the four topics that we've listened to was an occasion for you to exchange experiences and a start of an effective discussion that would contribute to just inclusive and adequate social protection that leaves no one behind. Let us now listen to the main findings of the interventions in each and every session. I'd like to ask first Mrs. Carmela Godo, the original director of the IOMN, to present a, a summary of the findings of the session on coverage. Uh, the floor is yours, Mrs. Godo. Thank you very much. You can hear me? Hopefully. Uh, yes, yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, listening to all statements made at the parallel session on coverage, we clearly heard the message that the COVID-19 pandemic has reaffirmed the importance of social protection system in mitigating the socioeconomic impacts of a crisis and supporting a pathway to a robust and inclusive economic recovery. The pandemic has also highlighted the importance of continuing to strengthen social protection systems and providing comprehensive, adequate, inclusive, and sustainable contributory and non-contributory programs accessible to all on the basis of need and vulnerabilities across the life cycle of, for achieving social justice, human development, and inclusive growth. We noted from Egypt the forward-looking measures with the new fund to be launched, a strategy for the most vulnerable workers, new modality for those who do not contribute and are without social protection, and a new program for parity in education. From Oman, a new integrated approach to work with private sector, CSO, and online ministries. From Bahrain, the need to harness social protection as one of the fundamental human rights. From Iraq, we noted the need to integrate social security and social protection and the need to enhance Hans data, data on informal sector. From Morocco, the need for a unified Arab vision on social protection, a strategy for financial resources and monitoring and evaluation to improve social protection delivery. The discussant also highlighted the need to improve the trust in social protect, uh, protection schemes and to communicate widely about obligations and rights in terms of social protection and to review positive country experiences shared and see how such solution can be replicated. Another key takeaway from the statements and discussion has been the recognition that COVID-19 and deteriorating economic conditions in the MENA region has had a compounding effect, particularly on those excluded from national systems and also refugees, uh, sorry, and also refugees, displaced populations, migrants, and other people on the move. And that it is necessary moving forward to find sustainable long-term solutions for those dependent on humanitarian aid, particularly those in the informal economy, especially as humanitarian donor funding shrinks, conflict are increasingly protracted in nature and needs continue to grow more. That's all from uh, our session. Thank you very much. We will listen also to the uh, second uh, session around responsiveness Mrs. Newton, Newton, can you hear us? Please, the floor is yours for a summary of the findings. Uh, 
Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, we can hear you. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so um, we looked at two key areas, which were the need for comprehensive and flexible databases to respond effectively to shocks, and then also coordination platforms between key actors, that's humanitarian and development actors building on existing capacities. And then we also discussed a third area, which was effective grievance and redress mechanisms. So we had um, six panelists and just in brief, Jordan noted some key lessons were learned from COVID, including the need for an effective national framework to enable all to have access to sustainable development and to ensure that the learnings from COVID are built into national systems, such as institutionalizing a social protection coordination platform for all actors um, under the auspices of a newly launched national social protection strategy. And Jordan also focused on scaling up cash assistance for the COVID response, including to informal workers and giving access to basic services such as free health treatment. Um, and that high level political engagement was key to enabling a quick response. And another key lesson has been the digitization of the social protection sector through a unified social registry and e-payments to enable speedier response. Um, and then on Somalia, Somalia highlighted the importance of a clear policy framework for social protection to enable better coordination and system strengthening. And given that Somalia faces the impact of climate shocks and particularly the current drought, the role of early warning systems to respond to different shocks, this was cited as being key, as well as coordination between government ministries and agencies that collect early warning data. And of course, the use of cash again was mentioned. This has proved as, as absolutely critical to enable key and widespread response. And then we heard from Mauritania um, and the participants stressed the need for very strong data to enable all social protection actors to provide the services that are needed. And also the need to ensure that richer countries support countries that need more help to access vaccines and also to enable them to, to overcome the, the, the impact of the pandemic more broadly. And Mauritania also stressed the importance of income generating projects to ensure that people are taken out of unemployment and move away from the need for, for, for humanitarian or, or social assistance. Um, Yemen, they highlighted the scale of need with over 80% of the population below the poverty line. I think we're all aware of the impact of the conflict on Yemen, but we were given a very helpful run through um, of why they require such ongoing and, and widespread support, and also the need to, to address really specific needs. Food security was mentioned, um, and, and the needs of specific vulnerable groups, including pregnant and nursing mothers. And then we also heard from Qatar, who gave us an interesting reflection on, um, on their economic sector and the need to support informal workers through cash assistance and access to services um, in times when, when they might need particular types of assistance. So I hope that that's um, a useful quick summary of our panel session, over. Uh, Thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, Newton. And what about this session, session on the funding? A summary from Khalid Abu Zah, the regional director of uh, the uh, UNDP for the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, Mrs. Abu Zah, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Actually, I'll be delivering the summary. Uh, my name is Vitentini. I'm the regional chief economist for UNDP in the Arab region. So uh, what we have discussed in the session has been very, very um, enriching and comprehensive uh, with uh, a lot of ex examples. We all agree that countries have used COVID-19 as an opportunity to build uh, uh, more comprehensive social protection systems. 
and the tremendous efforts have been made by many countries to support social protection for vulnerable population, in particular in response to the pandemic. Some examples were shared from Tunisia, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. Zakat, for instance, has provided social safety net to vulnerable population in a number of countries. There has been also innovative financing um, aspects and uh, lessons learned that have been tested, uh, like in the case of Palestine, through private public private partnership. The expansion of the Takaful program in Jordan was also brought as a, an, an, another example. Some countries have expanded digital payments, like in the case of Morocco. Um, this actually can address uh, some multiple uh, development needs that go beyond social protection per se. Uh, and expand access to finance and address uh, potential leakages in the systems. However, there are still a lot of challenges um, in providing adequate social protection uh, in many countries in the region. Issues related to a lack of social protection strategy, fragmented social protection programs, and uh, together with other uh, governance institutional capacity aspects are issues that need to be addressed. A uh, unified and comprehensive strategy has been discussed as a key, um, as much as uh, a clear selection criteria, disaggregated data uh, by vulnerable groups for better targeting. Under investment, the social protection remains a key challenge across uh, the region. In the region's developing countries, public expenditure on social protection in the region is still inadequate. Finding new financing sources is needed to achieve an adequate social protection system as a result. Expanding social protection coverage and adequacy for informal workers is critical. Everybody agree with that. And here there can be various financing models that can be used or can be considered. In fragile crisis countries, as well as in low-income countries in the region, um, there will need additional support from international partners in order to expedite the recovery uh, through better social protection program. There can be way, many ways to increase the financial resource allocated to social protection, as we have discussed, including transparent and equitable tax systems, reallocation of public expenditure from unproductive expenditure, and uh, we have seen uh, some examples across um, the region. Deficit spending is, uh, remains one of the options, using better ODA and more stable and predictable ODA, and also improving public financial management system and uh, social protection systems efficiency um, uh, a are critical points. Normally, countries will need to adopt a mix of these options, and that's what we have seen uh, so far. Also, the role of civil society and private sector has been highlighted to strengthen partnership in this critical area. Thank you very much. Nishkur Sayyid Vito Antini bin Yebe and Sayyid Bozar, who is a Kabir of the Sadiyin for UNDP. We would like to thank uh, Mr. Vito Antini uh, on behalf of Mrs. Buzar. He is uh, a senior economist in UNDP. And now I will move to the last session regarding uh, governance. It was moderated by Mrs. Rana Hashi, who is a program manager of the Middle East or the uh, East Mediterranean uh, uh, who manage? Uh, Please uh, uh, take the floor, uh, Mrs. Rana Hashi. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Sabine. We had five uh, country participants, which were Syria, Emirates, Libya, Sudan, and Algeria. It was really a fruitful and rich discussion, and some of the topics were represented during the discussion. So my, uh, my colleagues have uh, uh, noted, or I have noted that through what my uh, colleagues have presented that there was a repetition of most of the topics. When it comes to governance, I can focus on three or four main points. Of course, all the countries have expressed the importance of good governance in general and the fact that governance was one of 
الإجراءات اللي اتخذتها توبكس ذات هاف من وقت Help them alleviate the burden of the pandemic on the people and also on implementing the right policies. First, the countries have stressed the importance of the multi-sectoral approach and platforms, and this multi-sectoral approach includes the private sector, the uh, civil society, and the importance of this approach increases uh, social protection and governance. We also ask certain questions regarding the challenges uh, on the uh, multi-sectoral approach, because we know that the implementation of such an approach is not easy to implement. The countries have shown and have expressed that there was a lot of uh, cooperation and a lot of solidarity between the sectors, and we hope that we will continue to see such a solidarity among the sectors. And we hope that it is going to be one of the main uh, it is actually one of the main lessons that we have learned from COVID or from the a pandemic. We also learned that there is an importance, uh, it is very important to create institutions and organizations to help and support the fragile populations. In Syria, for example, there were many services provided for the children. Sudan, services were provided for more than 100 million households, or actually uh, 1 million households. They also, the, uh, Sudan, I mean, have mentioned the, the issue of the refugees, which is very important and should have more light shed on uh, everywhere. Also, the importance of sharing data and the importance of having sufficient data to strengthen social protection. Many countries have mentioned the importance of creating digital platforms, which is something that we have seen under COVID-19. And these platforms really help provide many social services, such as health services or other services. In Nigeria, for example, they have created a platform to receive demands, grievances, and grievances and demands from women mostly, and they were guided on the federal level and on uh, and in the remote areas and rural areas, and they told them how they could face their own challenges. Also, I would like to mention at the end, because we also asked an important question, which was how the policies or governance uh, were dealing with the violence against women or domestic violence. And here at UN, we are celebrating 16 days against violence and domestic violence and the importance of the policies to be implemented by countries to protect women and the household from violence. At the end, everybody stressed on the importance of having no one left behind, which means that everybody should be included in social protection, all categories, all the fragile categories, and the importance of strengthening the uh, systems. They said, not only no one left behind, we said we leave something behind, especially after the pandemic. We need to leave strong systems that provide the strong uh, social protection and the good governance. Thank you, Dr. Rana, and uh, we would like to also thank all the facilitators of the parallel sessions uh, who were discussing the main topics of this forum and which have allowed us to have a glimpse of all the discussions. We will get now to the closing session where we will listen to the representatives of the EU and the ESQA representatives. I will now give the floor to 
الغربي آسيا تبعت الكلمة الاتحاد الأوروبي مع شمال أفريقيا في المديرية العامة لمفاوضات Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear excellencies, um, it's, uh, it's a great honor to be here and to be able to represent the European Union in this uh, important forum. Uh, social protection is indeed a, uh, is a commitment of the EU, uh, both internally, I mean, um, the EU is committed to social protection as it's, it's pretty at the heart of its tradition of, um, of social cohesion in, uh, in, our, in our countries and uh, reflected as well as a has been mentioned uh, through the SDG targets and uh, through its own programs and, and cooperation priorities. When we look at the overall, uh, at the overall context, um, access is indeed expanding and certainly the COVID pandemic has uh, brought to the fore the importance of uh, safety nets and social protection measures. Um, but there are huge gaps that still exist. Uh, over 50% of the population still does not have access to uh, uh, social protection. That's uh, 4 billion people in the, in the world. And uh, if we take social protection as a human right, and uh, which is crucial to tackle poverty, uh, to reduce inequalities, and it is a powerful socioeconomic stabilizer and uh, a powerful instrument for social cohesion, as a lot of speakers have already mentioned. Um, the societies uh, have to build this resilience and COVID has really made that even more uh, evident if necessary. And it's raised the importance of, uh, of uh, social protection measures. And this will be even more important uh, in the future. Hence the importance of this discussion and the importance of designing and defining ways, the most effective ways to reach uh, universal coverage. It has been at the heart of the political agenda. It continues to be, and it is our duty in uh, those ones of agencies like the UN agencies and all the donors to keep that on the political agenda and in the discussions with our partner countries. Um, the EU is running social protection, supporting uh, social protection programs in a number of countries, over 30 countries across, uh, across Africa. And uh, in most Arab countries in the North Africa, whether in Morocco, Tunisia, Egypt, Jordan, um, financing uh, is, is, uh, is consistent and continuous. Uh, we heard uh, Ms. Santini mentioning the importance of uh, having a stable and, um, and foreseeable uh, financing. A lot of our, our funding goes through uh, budget uh, support and budgetary support instruments and hence we find ourselves at the heart of the discussions whether in Morocco or in Tunisia in particular and the linkage that that budgetary support allow us to make uh, in the discussions we have with our partner countries the important linkage with public finance management and uh, sustainability of the um, of the um, uh, social protection uh, measures as financing and sustainability are at the heart of their success. Um, the, uh, when you, we look at the Morocco experience where throughout the last 10 years, Morocco has been expanding gradually uh, the, um, the uh, social protection coverage to additional categories of, of its population, 
we see how important it is to phase it in and to gradually um, to gradually introduce it in the social uh, social uh, protection schemes. Um, the Moroccan experience also show us how it is important to look at the budget as a whole. A number of measures were in place, in place, they were fragmented, they were not providing a universal coverage and rationalizing those measures allows to make subsist, uh, substantial um, savings and therefore contribute to the financing of, of the schemes. Digitalization is another, is another very important uh, tool to reduce costs and uh, facilitate access. We saw at which speed that was uh, implemented uh, at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. Finally, one point which is particularly important for us is data protection. Of course, uh, social uh, protection schemes rely on uh, beneficiary uh, identification, which is cumbersome and which is based into uh, social registries, which uh, need to ensure uh, proper protection of personal data. COVID has accelerated the agenda, but much more remains to be done. And uh, I'm very happy to be here and discuss and hear the discussions for the future work which lies be before us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mikos. I would like to call Mr. Amin uh, Tabet uh, to take the stand who is going to give us the closing remarks by Esqua and tell us what was agreed upon during the four previous sessions. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Excellencies, colleagues, dear audience. Good evening from Beirut. I am glad and happy to be here with you today, closing this forum on the future of social protection in the Arab region organized by the United Nations. Allow me at first to extend my congratulations for your effective presence and participation in this forum. In this particular juncture, while trying to deal with the post-COVID-19 reality and its different effects and consequences that seem to uh, that will seem that they are going to accompany us in the future this high level of participation shows the importance of such a forum and such open discussions on social uh, and social protection and also stresses the added value of the uh, group work and collaborative work in the united nations and i am pretty sure that all of you agree with me that such a forum, which is the first of its kind, must not be the last. And we should continue and go on working together collaboratively and to organize new meetings for the benefit of this region and its populations. In fact, I have followed your rich discussions and I have learned from my colleagues what was uh, discussed in the parallel sessions. The discussions were very encouraging. It shows a high level of commitment and of responsibility towards the populations and all the beneficiaries and everyone who is in need of social protection. This kind of commitment was reflected in the positive responses, the creative responses also that was provided by the member states, regardless of the institutional and funding or economic uh, challenges. I shall not uh, re uh, tell you about everything that was uh, said before, but I will uh, shed light on certain points. 
when it comes to coverage, we all agreed on the importance of uh, universal coverage, which means that we need to go on. We need to go on working and striving to cover everybody, including the, the uh, uh, including workers of in the form uh, of the informal sector, and to cover everybody, including everybody who needs that uh, coverage, especially what we can call uh, the marginalized piece, uh, people. When it comes to shock responsiveness, it was really important what I saw that uh, we were uh, relying and everybody was relying on updated platforms and the uh, uh, and everybody was stressing the importance of uh, digitizing the uh, records while protecting the data at the same time which supports our readiness to tackle future shocks uh, and where possible to be preemptive when it comes to shock responsiveness. And that means that we will be able to, uh, to uh, respond to the grievances and to uh, demands more effectively. When it comes to the economic part or the financial part, a lot was uh, said about uh, the need for more economic and financial support in a way that would expand social protection networks in a more effective way. It, is also, it was also important to, uh, or it was noteworthy how different players went into uh, play and were strived together in order to provide that kind of financial coverage, like for example, Zakat and other institutional or institutions, in addition to the importance of providing foreign support for the less developed countries. At the end, I would like to express my pleasure at uh, seeing the agreement amongst everybody on the opinions, which, for example, in addition to targeted programs, we have all agreed that there is a need for a true cooperation and coordination between all the stakeholders in the humanitarian uh, field and in the other fields such as uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, public institutions. So that was more regarding the discussions in the four platforms. As you all know, the first draft of the declaration that you have uh, received was drafted based on the first round of your discussions or the discussions of those who have represented you during the preparatory meeting of the uh, uh, meeting that was held in September 21. The amendments were made through uh, letters and through uh, a written communication. It was obvious that most of the discussion topics were there and they were present in the draft of the declaration. Therefore, if everybody agrees primarily on the declaration, I suggest that we all uh, consider that we have adopted this declaration, that the forum has adopted this declaration. So since everybody agrees, since there are no reservations or objections, I am glad to declare that the declaration on uh, the future of social protection in the Arab region, building a vision for a post-COVID-19 reality, was adopted by the participants of this forum. I thank you greatly for your confidence, for your trust, and for the constructive dialogue that has added and enriched our experience and added a different layer of thinking and of intellect and outcomes. I would also like to seize the opportunity to thank all their excellencies who have taken part in our discussions for their uh, objective discussions and their targeted discussions. Also, we hope that in the future, 
now that we have adopted this uh, declaration, it will also be adopted by the ministerial uh, forum to be held in Riyadh soon. And as the General Secretary of ESPA has mentioned, we shall be working on shedding more light on this forum during the uh, Arab uh, Forum on Sustainable Development that will be held in March 2022, scheduled to be held there. And now before closing this special uh, forum, allow me to thank everybody on your behalf and uh, uh, all the facilitators, all the organizers, uh, and uh, the uh, and also thank anyone, uh, the translators, the interpreters, and anyone else who has participated in this uh, forum and that has allowed it to reach its uh, successful conclusion and closing. We hope that we will fight off this uh, pandemic and we will be able to meet again face to face very soon. I thank you very much and I hope and I uh, pray God that he protects us and you all. Thank you, Mr. Tabit, your excellencies, dear audience. In the name of the organizers, I would like to thank you all for your uh, valuable participation in this forum. And as I said in the first beginning of this uh, forum, social protection has always been the main pillar of, uh, of the social uh, uh, policies that help uh, eradicate poverty and in and enhance and improve the lives and future of the populations. No country can uh, reach its full development if they do not improve their social protection policies, if they, not, uh, they don't improve resilience and shock responsiveness and good governance. And of course, uh, and if, uh, and of course of course enhance coordination between the stakeholders i would like to thank you and we hope that uh, we will see better social protection policies implemented in our countries uh, in the future thank you very much